All right, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to have a look at the new and improved High Fleet Kraken. This game has been updated for 10th edition, which is just around the corner, and I hope you're excited to get some new nids on the table. This game has been broken down into two steps, the first get it on the tabletop, and the second to elevate it. All of the paints you'll need will be listed below in the description, so let's get into it. All right, we're gonna start off with a bit of Seraphim Sepia. Now you could use a contrast paint here as well, but I don't have any, so I'm working with this. We're starting off from a gray primer. I primed this in black and then spread white over it, um, but you can just use a gray primer. We're gonna apply two coats over the top of this, get ourselves some nice, deep, saturated shadows. Now we're gonna come in with some Talarn sand and we're gonna start building up our highlights. We want to hit all of these elevated spaces where the wash or the contrast paint did not settle. I'm going to start picking out some of the details and some of the structural shapes within the chitin or within the flesh. Uh, I'm not really sure where one starts and the other one stops on nids, so you might hear me using that one a bit interchangeably as we progress through the video. So you can see I'm just focusing on all the raised areas where the wash didn't settle, just establishing a nice solid smooth base coat over the skin. And we're working with effectively what would be a layer consistency here. Haven't really thinned this down too much on the palette. Most of the moisture is coming through the wet palette. If you're using a dry palette or a bit of tile or something, just add a bit of water to your paint to help it flow off the brush a bit better. So towards the tail, you want to be picking out those ridges, those defined edges along the tail and then just applying a nice smooth coat over the top of it. We'll build up a bit of a transition with our highlights and it'll make it look quite cool. And then you just wanna grab all of those details underneath, again, leaving that shade in the recesses and picking out all of the elevated spaces. Now we're gonna come in with some Yashabity Bone and we're gonna repeat, basically repeat the same process, trying to cover slightly less of the skin or the chitin this time starting to focus on building up our highlights and picking out the details and the structures within the model. So I'm not worried about mixing the colors or anything like that. I'm focused on trying to get this model ready for the tabletop in a reasonable amount of time. If you wanted to spend a wee bit longer on it, you could create some gradients and some steps between the colors as you build your highlights, again, covering slightly less space each time. But because these colors are, are quite close and the details on these models are very distinct and very sharp, jumping between these, these shades or these values creates more contrast. Now when it comes to the tail, again, we're coming in, we're applying the same coat, aiming for the ridges, aiming for the edges, and then feathering it out towards the tail, pulling all of our pigment towards the tip of the tail. And I will be applying two coats of this as well to ensure we have a nice saturated smooth finish over the model. So after you've applied two coats, you should have something that looks a bit like this. Now taking Screaming Skull as our last highlight for the skin, and this time you wanna just be focusing towards the edges or towards the highest sections or the most visible raised areas across the model. Now this jump isn't as big as our jump from the Talar and Sand to the Shabbity Bone, but it does help to pick out that extra detail and that distinction within the shapes and the components of the skin or the chitin. And you'll see I'm working with a reasonably sized brush here. I'm using a size two Artis Opus Series S because I wanna get all of this stuff done quickly. It provides me with a nice full belly where I can store a lot of paint and then 
a nice fine tip where I can do the details. And you'll see at the tail the way I applied the paint and then brushed over that line to smooth out the transition, feathering it out. So we're now going to take some of Fist and Red and we're just going to apply this all over the carapace ensuring we get a nice smooth finish over the top of it. It'll likely take two coats, but the white base will add extra saturation and vibrancy to the color. If you're building this up from black, I would recommend that you paint all of the carapace white before you apply your red. It just gives you a better, more vibrant finish. So be careful whenever you're doing this as well. Try not to hit any of the skin because red has a tendency to stain. But if you do, get a clean brush, dampen it, and just rub away the excess paint. If you have to go back in and touch up one of your colors, that's fine, don't worry about it. And also be sure to get into all of those recesses and all of those steps between the carapace. So we're now going to take some Abaddon Black and apply this over the hooves or the feet and any of the claws, nails, teeth, any of those details. And also the gun. Uh, don't forget about the gun. The gun is also going to be black in this. Now there are some hard to reach places with the way that the model is positioned. Just take your time and uh, work through it at a, at a pace you're comfortable with. Don't try to rush it. And then we're going to take some Incubi Darkness and this is going to be used for the tubing that, atta that attaches the gun to the arm and also the tongue. So this is just our accent colour within this scheme. So whenever you're doing the tongue, if you hit any of the teeth, just come back in with some Abaddon Black and cover those up. So your new nids are now more than ready for the tabletop. We've got some nice saturated reds and some good detail in the skin, but we're going to look at elevating all of these components in the next steps. So I'm now coming in with a glaze of Incubi Darkness and Abaddon Black. This just helps to add some tonal variation within the carapace and gives you that green red contrast. It's very, very subtle, but it does add an extra level of dimension to this. And we're just working from say like a quarter of the way in on the carapace and then pulling it into the recesses. And we'll be applying two or three coats of this. It depends on how dark you want your recesses to be and how dark you want your shadows to be. But we're just repeating the process, leaving a bit of the Mephiston red visible each time and helping to darken down those recesses and those shadows. Again, keeping that Incubi darkness in there adds an extra level of depth and contrast between the red and the green. So once you're done, with adding in your shade, we're going to come back in with the Mephiston Red. We're going to use this to edge highlight each of the carapace panels and then we're also going to use it to pull in some additional detail. So you'll see I'm working the brush like down from around the middle of the carapace towards the edge, adding in these lines and this definition within the carapace. Just adds a wee bit more dimension and again gives it more texture and more interest. Applying the tip of the brush and pulling it towards the edge. You want the, the edge where we had the Mephiston red left to be the most colorful or the most saturated color. So we're depositing most of our paint towards that area. And don't forget to pick out that uh, edge highlight all the way down the center of the carapace. Once you get into a flow with this and you get into the rhythm of how to do these lines and how to pull these lines, almost quite uh, relaxing to do. So 
So again, I've picked out the edge and I'm starting to draw my lines using the tip of my brush and then applying slightly more pressure as I get towards the edge to widen the line and make it a bit more defined. And then just adding in some small lines out from the recesses at the top of the carapace along that spiny ridge. So now we're going to come in with some Evil Sun Scarlet and start to highlight our Mephiston Red. Again, we're performing the same steps and the same process, just covering slightly less area and focusing our color more towards each of the edges. So you can add smaller lines in here and it'll help to create more, I guess, visual confusion or distortion around the edge of the carapace, almost smoothing out that transition. So you can see I'm using slightly smaller lines closer together to build up that color and that saturation in the Evil Sun Scarlet. For any larger lines that you put down whenever you're painting your fist in red, be sure to go over the top of those and really add in that, that distinction and that saturation and that strong contrast within those lines. Kind of make them look like cracks or damage within the, within the carapace or growth lines, almost. But you can see the difference that adding the Evil Sun Scarlet makes. It's a lot more powerful and a lot more striking. So we're now taking some fiery orange. This is an older color and I'll put the equivalent in the description below. We're mixing that in to our Evil Sun Scarlet and repeating the process again. Covering slightly less area, focusing more towards the edge of the carapace and on those edge highlights. Again, using slightly smaller strokes as well to build up that saturation and that contrast towards the edge of the carapace. And again, you can already see the difference that adding in that fiery orange makes. So once you've finished the entire carapace doing that, we're gonna come in with a mix of a bad and black, inky by darkness, and screaming skull to start highlighting up the claws. So instead of adding white, we're taking screaming skull because we've already used it in the model and it helps to create that harmony within the color scheme on the model. So we're almost treating the claws and the hooves the same way as we did the red. We're adding in some lines, we're adding in texture and creating definition that way. It also means we don't have to worry about having super smooth transitions over these spaces because we're using texture to kind of break it up and add some visual confusion or distortion in the area. But you want to focus on the edge highlights, creating that sharp look to each of, uh, each of these elements. Make it look more menacing, more fierce. So you can see I'm using the side of my brush, or the side of the tip of the brush, just to catch that edge highlight and then using uh, those, again, short, sharp lines to create that texture and that interest towards the tip of the claw. And when it comes to the gun, you want to focus on just getting some structure and some shape to the gun. You know, highlighting where the magazine would be, kind of towards the front where the barrel would be, and also where these, like, connector tubes attach. We're just adding in a bit more of the, the Screaming Skull just to bring up that highlight and create more contrast within these areas. Again, focusing on those edge highlights and towards the tip. You can use this color then to highlight up the teeth and any like fingernails or smaller claws on the model. Then we're gonna take a glaze of a bad and black and apply this towards the center of the gun where the like eye thing is. Um, I'm not sure if it's an eye or like a nodule or, or what exactly it is, but that's where we're pulling all of our uh, glaze towards. It just creates more contrast and more distinction within the gun. So then I'm going to take Cabalite Green and mix this with our Incubi Darkness to create our first highlight step for those tubes connecting to the gun. I also realized in the box art that they left those like ridged areas. Um, black but I think it's cooler just to make them a bit more distinct and add in a bit more pop color with our Cabalite Green and Incubi Darkness mix. 
And I'm just using this to highlight up the tongue as well, focusing on that you know raised ridge or that edge that there almost is in the mouth and then towards the tip. And again with the gun, like I was mentioning, making these green just adds in that extra bit of pop color and makes it a wee bit more exciting. And exactly the same with the black claws, we're going to be adding in Screaming Skull as our highlight color instead of using white for the green details. So we're focusing on that ridge in the tongue and then towards the tip. The center of those raised ridged areas in the gun, the top corner of the ball orb eye thing, whatever it is, and then highlighting the edges of those connector tubes. Adding in a wee bit more of the Screaming Skull, we just go back in and create some more definition towards the tip of each of these components. So getting that edge highlight on the tongue, a dot in that sort of eye jammy thing, and then just the center of the center of the components within the gun and a couple of edge highlights on those connector tubes. So one of the big things that they added to this scheme, which I thought was a genius touch, was this like pattering or this mottled effect as you move from the carapace into, you know, the chitin or the, the skin in the body. So we're taking some of our seraphim sepia and we're creating a glaze, just using it out of the pot and brushing that up towards the shoulder, the back of the head, and sort of guess where the carapace touches the tail. We're then gonna take some Mornfang Brown using Again, a nice sharp tip on our brush. We're just gonna start building in some shapes. They can be irregular, they can be large, they can be small. As you taper down towards the front of the arm or the forearm, you want the dots to become smaller. Uh, so it creates this gradient almost. But this is kind of like stippling and then kind of drawing some bigger shapes. Get as creative as you want with this. Don't worry about them being perfect. Don't worry about them all being the same size or having the same transition, this is the time to add some individuality to each of your gaunts by adding in these dots and this almost like giraffe style pattern as the, the carapace sort of blends into the skin. And you can do it on the tail, you can do it on the larger rear legs as well as the front. The back of the head I think is a great place to put it in. Now we're going to take some of our fiery orange and we're going to apply this over the eye. You don't need to worry about building up from a fist in for this because it's such a small area you should be able to get a nice even coat. Then I'm going to mix in some of the primary yellow, hit towards the back of the eye and then a simple dot of primary yellow just to finish it off. And this is the gaunt all done. I think this looks great. I think this is almost like beyond tabletop plus for your army. Um, and here he is in all of his glory on the base. Really really happy with how this turned out. Um, I think it's a super effective way to paint your gaunts and to get your army on the tabletop. Having that two-step process where you can get them pretty much at a standard where you can build upon it and then taking it to the next level is a really easy way to work through your army and create a nice consistent look to them without having to worry about doing it all in one sitting. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop them below in the comments. And if you want to take your painting to the next level, I have a Patreon that's focused around feedback and coaching. You also get access to exclusive guides and content. If you want to show me what you've been working on or what you've been using these videos for, please head over to the Discord and drop some pics into the whips or the completed project. I would love to see what you've been doing. Just want to say thank you again for watching and I'll catch you at the next one. All the links can be found below in the description.